Hey guys, Jason McCary reached out to me the other day through Facebook and he was on uh, a TV show called Evening Magazine in the early 80s. It was kind of a Bay Area thing. They did an interview on him. He was in the San Jose Mercury, he raced for Rouse Bikes, he raced for Boss. The poor guy doesn't have any of the stuff. There's no pictures, no videos. He just has nothing. And he's looking for anybody out there that might have any footage of the interview, any of his races, any of his race photos. Uh, Bruce Bennett put out something to the Boss BMX fans website. Uh, so we're still waiting. Hopefully you guys find something. If so, let me know. Let's get into guys, the video. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're going to do a magazine tonight. I'm excited about this one because I'm going to do something a little bit different than normal. We're actually going to jump ahead a decade. So I'm going to do BMX Plus this time, but we're going to do 1995, which is really cool because typically I'm doing 80 stuff, but I found this magazine not long ago. Uh, I found I did a BMX Plus uh, issue probably about two or three videos back, and I also had come across this one. I put it away because I was thinking, well, I'm really not doing 90s ones, but I figured, you know what, this looks pretty good. I think it's definitely worthwhile getting into, so we'll go through this page by page. What was I doing in 1995? Well, see, March 95, I was probably 24, so I was definitely in the collections industry already. I was already working as an adult, living as an adult. But I was still buying and following BMX racing. I didn't start racing again until 1998. So, but still, let's go into it. I'm excited to get into this one. I'll see you guys in there. All right, let's get started. So, first of all, I wanted to point out a couple things. I love this cover. I really, really like this cover. Uh, you see Gary Ellis in his prime here, and he's racing for GT, obviously. And I love these colors. Uh, it's kind of a neon-ish, you know, uh, it still looks really, really cool. It's very bright. The thing that you have to appreciate about the 80s and 90s, it was very easy to identify who was riding for who, and it was easy to identify who the rider was. It's a little bit more difficult now. Uh, although I do love today's stuff. I mean, I think the gear today looks really, really, really nice and really awesome, but Again, it doesn't, it's difficult because everybody looks factory, <laughs> you know, and I'm guilty of that too. I've never been a factory rider, but I always tried to look good when I raced. I always tried to have nice gear, everything matched. It's just the, uh, you know, I guess you can call it uh, kind of my own personal hangups. I used to like things just to look right when I raced. Even if I wasn't the fastest guy, at least I looked cool. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look. Now, this frame that you're looking at here for Gary Ellis, if you get a closer look, Definitely chrome molly. That's not an aluminum frame, and I really love chrome molly frames. I, I've been looking a lot at, uh, what's his name, Dale Holmes. I like Dale Holmes' frame, that new one he has out. I love looking at the S&M stuff. They got the chrome molly stuff. Uh, I really, really like it. Check out the Echo helmets. So we're going to take a look at that. Give your helmet a custom paint job. We'll be looking at that today. Jump higher, ballistic bunny hops. <laughs> Buyer's guide to the hottest handlebars and stems. And the new national champ is, so it looks like we're going to go over the Grands, which is some of my favorite stuff to go over. Bicycle, bicycle Stunts Finals, exclusive report for GT's top secret full suspension bike. And again, it's the ABA Grand Special. So this one should be pretty cool. Let's crack it open. All right, here goes our opening page. So we have a Haro ad here on the left. And now things are starting to change now, uh, as you can see, because it's not 90, so you're going to start to see the bikes, kind of, or it's not the 80s, excuse me, so you're going to see the bikes kind of evolve. Now, if you look at, uh, you got Billy Griggs here. Now, Billy is riding the monocoque bike here, and he's still rocking the classic Redline flights with it. That gives you an idea of how epic those cranks are and how, how good they were made. You know, he's still riding them in the 90s. Uh, but other than that, the bikes are now starting to change a little bit. Uh, they're starting to become a little bit more modern. I actually rode a bike like this, but it was not a Haro. I had a Specialized Fat Boy. And it was in 1998, I think. I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. I started racing again. And I started with the 20-inch 20 20-inch 20 Specialized. And I remember this pretty clear. I went to my first race in 98, and I had absolutely no class. I had to race, like, I think 16 experts. And at the time, I was 28. So, of course, I just got my butt handed to me. It was like, oh, my God, maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was I took the bike back to this bike shop. I bought it somewhere in Fremont, California. I, I, for the life of me, I don't remember what the bike shop was, but I took the bike back and I told the guy, I go, listen, um, I bought this bike to race and I don't have a class, so I don't really know what to do. Maybe I should get a cruiser. He goes, well, we have the same bike and cruiser. 
and I go, okay, can I trade this one in? And he, <laughs> I know it was kind of a, kind of a nervy thing for me to ask, can I trade this bike in? But he said, you know what? I don't normally do that, but if you could make the bike look new, because obviously this has been ridden and I told him I haven't dropped it, nothing. I mean, I literally had the bike for like two weeks and he said, clean it up, bring it back. So I took the bike home. I remember I scrubbed it, I cleaned it, I made it look perfect. And then I even took armor all and went over the entire tires to make them look new again, took the bike back. And he, he gave me credit, he gave me the store credit. I turned around and bought the cruiser and the cruiser was a little bit more expensive. And then I ended up racing uh, cruisers from 98 to the end of 99, um, which was pretty cool. I mean, it definitely gave me people to race, uh, which was great. Uh, and I did have some fun on it, but it just wasn't the same as the 20 inchers. And that's, that's why I went back to 20 inchers eventually. So what do we got in here? Features how to bunny hop higher, how to paint your helmet inside with Hoffman bikes, BMX pro size stem buyer's guide. We got some fly paper, BMX plus cutouts, product pro pro talk. And then we got the GT full suspension concept bike, 95 Haro master, the ABA grands and bicycle stunts final. doesn't look like we're going to get a lot of racing in this one, but who cares? Let's go through it. First ad DMC. So obviously we're going to start off with mongoose and we got some freestyle stuff and we have uh, it looks like Dennis McCoy here, DMC. So this is actually a pretty cool looking bike for what it is, you know, for a, a freestyle bike. Uh, again, I'm not really a freestyler, but I think that's really cool. Let's see, what do we have in here in the inside scoop? The number one pro in America right now, this is a very, at this very second was Gary Ellis. So Gary won the national uh, title that year. <laughs> and it's funny because you cracked open the magazine to the first page and then you already know who won the title. But that kind of gives you uh, an idea of what things were like. You know, there was no social media, there's no internet. Well, 95, there was very the very beginning stages of the internet, uh, but it wasn't as accessible as it is now. We definitely didn't have it on our phones. I think I had dial-up internet, AOL, you know. And so anyway, you'd have to wait for the magazine to come out to see who actually won the title. I mean, and for me, it was torture. Let's see, we got Steve Veltman was the 93 number one pro, which was plagued by injuries throughout the 94 season, but he did manage to make our new section. Let's see how they finish. Looks like there's a little bit of food stuck to this. That's embarrassing. Sorry, guys. So we got Gary Ellis won the title, and he won it by a landslide. He had 3,096 points here. Matt Hayden was national number two. Didn't know that, and this is why I like to go through these magazines. Billy Griggs, national number three. Very good. Brian Foster was national number four. Danny Nelson picked up national number five. Eric Carter with national number six. Charles Townsend with seven. John Purse picked up the eighth. Alan Foster, ninth. So it's cool that the Foster brothers were in the top ten, both of them. And then we had uh, Wade Boots picked up the number ten. Jason Richardson, national number 11. Brian Lopes with 12. And then finally Steve Veltman, national number 13. So this is very, very cool to see this. Let's go to the next page here. What do we got? Okay, so it looks like we're going to do some more inside scoop. we got Dennis McCoy. Interesting to see that the freestylers are still in all the race gear. Look at he's in the full Haro kit. <laughs> That's kind of cool. we got Todd Lyons here. He, Todd Lyons was also on the cover of this magazine. And we got the MBLs giving away two trucks to its pros this year. The first one will be awarded to the points leader at the annual Easter Classic in Orlando. The other will be given to the national number one pro for 1995. Now, don't quote me on this one, guys, but I'm pretty sure that John won both trucks. John first. I think he did. I was. I, I know in one of my race videos, I definitely saw him win one of the trucks. But I don't know if it was this year or not. But I, I think I'm right. I mean, I'm sure you guys will correct me. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So we have, uh, oh, wait, check out these race bikes here on the bottom. So we have something called... The HWE or HWA Fong Daddy is a new jumping bike by TNT. That's actually a really cool looking bike. And then next to it, we have the first of all, we have the profile. That's the profile, right? Uh, race bike right there. That's pretty sick. You gotta love that. I really, really like it. The bikes are still looking kind of 80s ish with the knobby tires and stuff like that, but they're starting to evolve slowly. Let's move on. We got mailbag. All right, let's read one of these. I always like reading these. Let's do, let's find one that's relatively short, like always. Uh, okay, here's one. Graveyard Products, Dear Mailbag. A couple months ago, the mag had a peg buyer's guide. 
I was interested in the Graveyard Products Peg. In your next issue in Inside Scoop, I noticed that the founder of Graveyard Products had died in a car accident. Oh, wow. His brother was supposed to take over the company, but I never did hear anything since that. Since that, is the company going to come back? And then, it, and that was from Brandon Rockwell, who was from Los Gatos, California. And here's the response. Graveyard Products is still up and running and cranking out high quality freestyle parts. Just check your local bike shop or some of the mail order companies listed here in BMX Plus, and you should be able to find everything that Graveyard offers. Wow, that's pretty sad. I would have never remembered that. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, let's go to, ooh, this looks interesting. Bike collector, let's read this one since bike collecting is kind of a thing now. What happens to BMX and freestyle bikes when they get old? The ones that die from breakage usually get tossed out, but what about the bikes that survive? I collect them. Now this is in 95, remember. Yes, that's right. Your old classics could become class collector's items, just like classic automobiles. Man, this guy was 100% on the money. I have held on. I have a heap of old bikes that I bought during my 12 years of racing and freestyling. They include a PK Ripper, a Quad Angle, a 1980 Haro Sport, an 88 Haro Team Master, an 88 GT Pro Freestyle Tour Team, a Torker 2, a couple of old red lines, Mongooses, and an 89 GT Timberline Mountain Bike. I don't think that's worth much. Right now I'm thrashing an Auburn CR20R. I truly love the sport of BMX. will always have a soft spot in my heart. Let's see what they said about this. And that was from David Portelli, all the way from Grace Dance, Australia. Wow. It says, David isn't kidding. He even sent us a photo of a bunch of his bikes to prove it. Here's a tip for, uh, for any of you other riders out there with parts lying around collecting dust. Get, an, get all your old parts together, build up an extra complete bike, and give it to a friend to ride. After all... The more people you have, you have to ride with, the better. That's a pretty good answer. But, you know, it's really strange because that is absolutely a thing. And how many of you guys have actually sat there and thought to yourself, man, I really wish I would have kept that bike. I mean, I've done that. I've had some pretty cool bikes. Of course, I've had my original Skyway. I wish I absolutely wish I would have kept that. I, I had a really cool PK Ripper that I built up. I really wish I would have kept that. I had a CW Cruiser. I had a CW 20. I've had a Diamondback Formula. I've had, oh my gosh, the list goes on and on. I can't, it's just, I had a Haro RS1. A lot of these I really wish I would have kept, especially the parts. I mean, there are certain parts I simply just gave away to friends that needed them, you know, and they're just gone. And that's just crazy. All right, let's keep going. We got a park pre ad here, Kiel Me Waller. I said, oh, good interview with Kiel Me Waller the other day on the Lane 8 podcast. Definitely recommend listening to that one. Oh, this is a really cool ad. This is an all GT freestyle ad. Showtime. I wonder, oh, it was. It was in the forum in the Laker, uh, where the Lakers play. I like the way they called it Showtime because that's basically what the Lakers were. They were Showtime. Let's keep going. Oh, hell yeah. Look at this. Wow. That. Oh, 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 oh. I love this. Let's see. Who's writing this? Uh, about two years ago, I'm sorry, about two years now, Answer Pro Fork Suspension has been, in, in, I'm sorry, inundating the BMX scene. As you read this, several companies are in the process of developing rear suspension BMX frames and GT bicycles is one of them. Now, let, let's pause for a second. Now, suspension bikes are absolutely a thing in the mountain bike world. As far as BMX is concerned, not so much. I mean, these, these pro forks here, although they looked really, really sick, they were basically kind of gimmicky and the fact is is that a lot of pros got paid to ride with these and that's what boosted the popularity of the pro forks because they didn't really serve a purpose for bmx as a matter of fact i had read that greg i'm sorry billy griggs had a set of these and he removed the springs from the inside of the forks so that they would become rigid and so that kind of eliminates the whole reason for the suspension fork but if you look at this bike, I mean, it is amazing. And if anybody has this bike, excuse me, guys, I'm trying to grab the back of this magazine, in its complete form, can you imagine what this would go for? I mean, check it out. It's got suspension in the middle of the frame, the pro forks, the spin wheels alone are worth a, a, a grip, and then the frame itself is aluminum. I love that seat, by the way. 
Oh my gosh, if I get hold of that seat, I'd put that on my bike right now. That is just really, really amazing. Rear suspension for BMX. All right, so let's take a look. Check out these pictures. Now, these are from the 70s. Look at that. These are great. That's Brent Patterson there. And let's say in this photo, it looks like Stu Thompson, number 43, could use a little front suspension. That's Brent Patterson, number 14, railing the turn. As a legend has it, Gary Turner, co-owner of GT Bicycles, had two rear suspension prototype bikes built up in approximately 1977. One of them went to Stomp and Stu, who at the time was sponsored by SE while racing a mongoose. Stu later loaned the proto bike to Dennis the Red Baron Dane, who still has the bike. Wow. Well, remember, this is 1995, so it makes you wonder if he actually still actually has it, but that's a really, really cool shot. Let's keep going. I really, really love this look, guys. Now, I had a GT as well. Now, I had a 1998 Team Series bo a team, a box Team Series frame, and I got that frame, which was similar to this one. I got that frame from this kid at work. I used to man, where I was used to, I was a manager, and he walked in my office. He saw all this BMX stuff that was sitting on my, uh, or hanging from my walls. And he goes, hey, man, what's with all the BMX stuff? And I go, oh, man, I've been in the BMX my whole life, you know, basically. And he goes, oh, my, my buddy has a GT hanging on his wall, never rides it. It's brand new. Would you be interested in it? And I go, yeah, sure. Well, bring it to work. Let me look at it. He brought it to work. Now, mind you, this was probably 2010 or so. He brought it to work, and it was perfect. It was brand new. It had never been put together, and I got it for like 150 bucks. And I ended up building it into a race bike, and I didn't end up racing it until, oh, man, that wasn't until 2000, 2012 is when I went back to race, racing, and that's when I put the bike together. Sorry, I blanked out there. I had to think about the answer. <laughs> anyway, check out the uh, suspension parts on this. That is really, really awesome. And it looks like it has a detangler. Or, I'm sorry, not detangler. I forget what this is called. What's that called, guys? Let's read this. Since it's quite a bit of movement between the front sprocket and the front and the free wheel when the shock is working, some kind of chain tensioning device is needed. The first prototype utilized a stock Shimano setup that is common on many mountain bike machines. Oh, okay, since the bike is moving like this, it's keeping it's keeping it like a derailleur. That's what I was trying to say. It's keeping it the chain from popping off. That's really cool. Oh, wow. This is awesome. Okay, hold on one second, guys. Guys, my daughter's cat was scratching at my bedroom door, so I had to let her in. So hopefully she doesn't interrupt the video. Okay, so we have a cast and frame. Look how beautiful this looks. Just for just for a second, guys. Look at the finish on this. How many of you guys would honestly put this together and write it right now? I mean, I can honestly say that I would. I think, <laughs> I think that is just a piece of artwork. And it's aluminum. It's not even chrome molly. So the fact that they got it to look like this with aluminum. Here, here comes the cat, guys. Look, here comes the cat. <laughs> okay. Her name's Ink. Okay, Ink. Let me, let me do my job here. All right. So let's move on to the next page here. All right, here we go. Now we're on the greatest race on earth. We finally made it. We're at the 1994 Grands. This is going to be awesome. Check it out. First thing that pops out in my vision here is, uh, oh, well, no, that's an Echo helmet. I thought it was a mountain bike helmet. But look at all the open face helmets. That's the first thing that pops in my mind. Ink, if you don't move, I'm going to sock you, cat. I would never sock the cat, guys. But anyway, let's keep going. Got the TNT frame here. We got Jason Richardson sitting right here. And in the front... Who is that? Is that Hayden? Let's see. Exiting stage right from the long first turn, ABA Grand's test riders enjoyed a fairly... This cat's killing me, guys. Hold on. Let me put her on the floor. Here you go. Get down. All right. Sorry about that. Ex ABA Grand's test riders enjoyed a fairly radical decent that was just perfect for picking up a massive speed for the big devils. I want to say that's Matt Hayden. Yeah, it says master on the back of his helmet. And it looks like Kiyomu Waller back here. And then I would say that's Brian Lopes. These are all guesses. And it looks like that could be Eric Carter on a hyper back there. And Brian Roost. So I'm going to say I'm right because I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> oh, wow. Check out this shot. Now, this is awesome. But here's the thing that I did not like. And I mentioned this in one of my race videos. I didn't like these mountain bike helmets. I just didn't like them. I know... 
I think they were going another direction. They were attempting to go another direction by introducing this stuff. Uh, Cause you know, the lighter the helmet, the better, I guess that was the whole thought process of it. But I don't know. I would, I just don't, I don't feel, I wouldn't feel protected in that, especially in the, the speeds that these guys were going, but this is a great shot. Nonetheless, we got Levesque here. Looks like Lopes here. This is a really, really good shot. I think that's Carter sitting in the background. We got Kevin Royal. Kevin Royal was in that was in that bike test we were just looking at. And then here's a good shot of the actual track. That's really cool. That again is the ABA Grands. I think it was probably still in Tulsa. If this cat doesn't get out of my way, guys, I this is why I don't let her in. Okay, you gotta get down. You gotta get down. All right, sorry guys, let's keep going. So that track is pretty awesome. Oh wow, look at this shot. So we got Mike King here. Now, we got Mike King and we got Brian Lopes. Now here's something that stands out immediately here. We got the, uh, both of them are in clipless shoes. There's Mike. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's Lopes. And then check out Mike. They're in the clipless shoes. So that's the beginning of something that was huge for the sport to change. Mike King was on fire at the 94 Grands. And yes, he's still wearing those crazy clipless shoe pedals. Maybe that has something to do with uh, King Mikey making a whooping seven mains or whopping seven mains throughout the weekend in class. Cruiser open. King seemed to be going fastest ever on Cruiser, but his 20, per, 20 inch performance was nothing to balk at. Check the results. Now let's see what it says about Brian. Brian Lopes has been mountain bike. Uh, mountain biking like a madman and doing commercials for Pepsi and other mega commercials, but that didn't seem to slow him down too much at the Grand Slopes. Didn't have the best weekend of his career, but it was by not by far not the worst. Can you say cha-ching? So I'm pretty sure, matter of fact, I'm 100% sure I've gone over some of these races in the Grands, and I, I remember they were interviewing Mike about the clipless pedals. And it was the first time I had seen them. I didn't even know they existed up until I seen this in the magazine. As a matter of fact, my only experience with with clips clips at all is uh, my my girlfriend and uh, had a, at the time had a mountain bike that I actually bought her, and it didn't have clipless pe uh, pedals on it, but it had the little uh, it had this like little cage that attached to the pedal, and you slipped your foot in like that, so you can kind of pull and pull it. Push. So I rode that like that, and I, that was no big deal because you can just slide your foot off. Uh, but with the clipless pedals, uh, man, they scared the crap out of me, guys. I don't think I'll ever use them. <laughs> Here's where Gary Ellis wins the truck. Uh, Mrs. Sharon Ellis kicks down. So pretty cool. I saw Gary win this in one of my videos. And then here's all. Can you name all the AA pros and veteran pros, Billy Griggs and Danny Nelson, not included? Well, yeah, maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a shot. Um, we got Sean Texas, Greg Hill, Justin Green, Brian Lopes. Don't know that one. Don't know that one. Steve Veltman, Eric Carter, Todd Lyons. Oh, don't know Gary Ellis. Oh man, I know it, but I don't remember. Um, gonna skip that one. Jason Richardson. Uh, Charles Townsend, Mike King, Harry Larry, Brian Foster, Alan Foster, uh, the Red Line Rider. I'm losing that one. Uh oh, guys, I'm starting to get fuzzy here. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the top row. Oh, wait, no. There's there's Harry Larry. There's Rob Fade. Oh, I know this one, too. Um, Daryl Young. Uh, Sanchez. And then the Sun Rider, it's got to be Christoph Levesque. Oh, uh, looks like we got Pete Longkarevich back here. Toby Henderson. That's it. That's all I got. That's not bad. I did all right. I probably did about 70% of them. <laughs> not too bad. Let's see who won. So uh, after points after round two, Gary Ellis, Christoph Levesque tied with Matt Hayden, Mike King, Justin Green, Danny Nelson tied with Terry Tanet. And Brian Lopes, and then finally Dan. Looks like Thunder Nelson. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, let's keep going. Man, there's a lot of good coverage on this race. I love it. Dang, I shouldn't have turned it that hard. Who's this? Somebody's doing a backflip. Or is that a front flip? Oh, it is a front flip. Who did that? 
Without a front brake and with the assistance of the SPD clipless pedals, Fuzzy blasted the first jump front lip over a set of doubles. That's Tim Fuzzy Hall. He did a front flip with clip shoes on, with clipless shoes on. That's that's insane. Wow, that's pretty rad though. You got here's here's Gary winning his uh winning his title, and uh, you got uh, it looks like Steve Veltman's handling handing it over to him. There's Mr. T Terry Tanet, and then the spoiler made the presence known at the '94 Grands. Christoph Levesque. I think that was the whole controversy thing. Because I think technically uh, Christoph had won. I think Christoph Levesque had technically won the title, but he wasn't an American rider, and at the time that was a rule. So, but still, I still got to give it to Gary. He did his thing. And I want to know who this is. Like, it's got to be Billy Griggs, I would imagine. It says OES on the back. Let's see the results for the actual race, though. So that first thing I read was after round two, but let's look at the overall overall results. So Gary Ellis won it. With a second and two and two aces, so he was just killing it. Christophe Levesque came in second. Matt Hayden third. Danny Nelson fourth. Mike King fifth. Justin Green sixth. Brian Loeb seventh. Terry Tanette picked up the eighth. And the the difference between uh, first place and eighth place one thousand eight hundred dollars for the win, and then last place was two hundred dollars. So sixteen hundred dollar difference. Uh, you know, but still, it's an eighteen hundred dollar win. You know, for the grands, you would expect more. But you can. This is the, about the time where the money started to kind of taper off a little bit, at least for the for the winnings, I should say. Uh, well, let's look at A Pro really quick. So A Pro, Jason Carnes won it. He got a thousand bucks for that win. You got Corey Corey Demberger picked up second. Mike Clert picked up the third. Robbie Morales with the fourth. Darren Reddy with the fifth, Scott Smith sixth, Rich Pelton seventh, and Bill Madden picked up the eighth. For Pro Open, though, Mike King won it. Charles Townsend with the second, Brian Lopes with third, Chris Schoonover with the fourth, Kiyomi Waller for the fifth, Kendall Burleson with the seventh, Billy Griggs got the, I'm sorry, with the sixth, Billy Griggs got seventh, and then Danny Nelson got eighth. But for Pro Cruiser, Mike King won that one. Justin Green got second, Kiyomi Waller with the third, Billy Ow. Ray Luscombe, Mike Darnley, Daryl Young, and then finally Terry Tanette. So pretty cool. Really, really cool. Let's go, let's go. Oh, now we're at the finals. Oops, I skipped a page, guys. Sorry. Oh, wow. This is a big ad for Dan's. I got an AXO uniform from Dan's. Um, I think that's one of the only things I've ever ordered from them. They were really cool about it. As a matter of fact, when I ordered the uniform, the guy talked me through everything. He goes, okay, what's, what's your waist? What's the length you usually wear in your pants? What size uh, shirt do you usually wear? And then he broke it all down. I think fit perfect. I got the uh, pants, the jersey, and a set of gloves, uh, all from Dan's. And it was just perfect. And I got it within a few days. I remember ordering it from work. I was supposed to be working. And I was like, I got to get a new uniform. Here's the finals for, what is this? The Bicycle Stunts Contest Round 4. The finals in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. This is pretty cool. And then, oh, wow, this is a cool ad. This is another Gary Ellis ad. So Gary Ellis was the 1994 NBL number one ABA pro. And now, now we know he actually won the ABA title as well. Uh, again, this is an all chrome Molly bike. This bike is pretty much perfection as is. Uh, and this is a stock bike. I think the only thing about it is the laid back seat post. That wouldn't be my thing. But other than that, everything else is near perfect. I, I think it is anyway. This is a great ad, by the way, and I love this logo. Let's see, what do we got next, guys? This is more of the finals. You had your, your ground, your ramps, and everything. I'm not really big on this, so I'm just going to roll right past it, but pretty cool. Wow. The bunny hop. How to bunny hop hire pro secrets revealed. Brian Lopes is the king of the bunny hop. If you want to learn how to bunny hop as high as Lopes, Read what he does and says that, and, and see, I'm sorry, read what he has to say and then prepare to blast off. That's pretty cool. I've never been the greatest bunny hopper, but I can do it. Oh, wow, this guy jumped over. Look at that. He came off a set of stairs and bunny hopped over this whole garbage can here. That was really sick. Okay, let's go to the next page. Oh, we got to paint your helmet. This is pretty cool. Did I skip some of that, guys? Because I feel like I just jumped to the end of that. Let's take a look. No, I think I'm good. No, I did. Okay, here we go. How to paint your helmet. There you go. 
this is pretty cool. If I, I've, I've actually painted my own helmets, but I've never done anything too fancy with them. As, as a matter of fact, in both instances that I painted my own helmet without the help of my dad, I just painted them black. Uh, usually because I was, once I was wearing a black 09 uniform, my helmet was blue, so that definitely didn't work, so I painted it black. And then the second scenario where I painted my helmet, I had a, uh, my, my fly uniform that I currently ride now, uh, it's black and lime green. And uh, my helmet at the time was blue again. <laughs> so, and it was an old helmet, so I didn't mind painting it black. And I knew it was temporary as I finally ordered a new helmet later. Uh, but yeah, it's, that's the only thing I've ever done is done on black. But to, to, to do this, to make them look uh, like that, and like that, that's that's just takes serious artwork I, and serious ability that I don't have. Although I wouldn't mind trying, but that's really really cool. We got the mini pistol grips. You can see Pete Longkarovich here, and this ad here for ATI, and then flat out power and crazy speed pro forks. Now, like we were talking about pro forks, look at the marketing <clears throat> answer put behind their pro forks. You know, you got all the top riders running pro forks. With the exception of like you don't see Gary Ellis running them because GT expects him to run the frame and forks that are from GT. But these other companies, they're like, yeah, let's join the bandwagon. And I believe there was some pretty big contingencies for these guys to run these forks. And that's probably what motivated them. It would motivate me, that's for sure. Inside Hoffman Bikes. That's pretty cool. And we got the Black Widow uh, crank set with the sprocket here. Oh, these pedals are sick. I love these. With that purple in there you gotta love that black against the purple that's really really cool and then we got the Har 95 haro master here and then here's all the back issues that you can pick up from bmx plus and just looking at these covers of these magazines i can tell you i probably had most of these magazines we got a dave oh dave mira rest in peace i got a dave mira interview right here trend and then bmx stems buyer's guide so the BMX stems uh, look at, looks like they're starting to go threadless here. It's kind of the beginning of that, and that's really cool. And I think this is one of the best things invented stem-wise because you know these are just way way more solid than the old school way of doing it. So I really appreciate this. Except I can't cut. I don't have tools to cut the forks. So anytime I've had to buy, uh, I bought a set of forks for my for my personal bike. Take it to Robbie's bike shop in Stockton, and they hook it all up for me. I've never had to do it myself. And here's all the DK stems. You got ox cart here. Here's a mongoose one right here on this side. And then we have uh, the Haro stems for fusion. And then, of course, all the GT stuff here. These are really nice looking stems, all of them. And then, oh, there's more here. So we have the uh, Peregrine and then Redline stems. And then there's Supercross. Supercross is still cranking out really good stuff, obviously. TNT. Power light profile. Wow, that's a nice looking stem. This one's really weird. Check this one out, guys. Looks like a tabletop. <laughs> it's by a company called BG. Here's your red line ad. Serious, get serious with the pro line. I wonder if this was really kind of like the uh well, I think there was really only one rider with, with red line at the time. And this is probably right before they started making a comeback in the sport because Redline's kind of up and down for me. Like I see it, it's huge at one point, and then it kind of disappears again. And then it's right now, I don't think there's any major people riding Redlines. I know you can still buy them, but that's kind of interesting. We got the fly paper. This is a really, really good shot. Wow. Love the yellow tires. He is just tearing it up. Who's the rider? I don't even know. Van Strout from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow, he was killing it. I love the fox leathers, by the way. That's really, really cool. Let's go on. BMX Plus cutouts. I guess you can cut all this out. Oh, this is kind of cool. If you want to put this stuff on your wall, that's kind of neat. I'm glad I didn't cut it out just so the magazine looks more complete. SM Prince Albert Cranks. Look at these pedals. Man, those things would crush your shins, man. Sean Butler killing it right here. And enables ad. And we got Pro Talk with, uh, let's see, Pro Racers and Freestyle Speak Their Mind. Uh-oh. Let's see what Charles has to say. I think a lot of freestyle I think a lot of the freestylers don't think twice about not taking a shower. <laughs> Charles Townsend. <laughs> and let's see. 
Keith Trenner, I think BMXers are dorks. Oh, wow. And then here, what does Gary say? What What do today's BMX and freestyle pros think of each other? Read the story and, and get ready for some uh, mudslinging. Billy Griggs. Let's just read like one or two lines from these guys. Billy Griggs, 10 years ago, I could have slammed freestyle because... It was just such a get rich quick thing for for so many guys. They weren't they were just a bunch of loons jumping on the bandwagon. Nowadays there's no room in freestyle to be fake. Well put. Darren Mitchell. I don't think freestyle is I don't think freestyle is bad. I just don't think a lot of freestyles of freestylers are guys who started out BMXing and couldn't hang. So he's just saying they were kind of washed up racers, but I don't know if I agree with that because I mean to be a great freestyler, you have to be a different type of dude. I mean, let's just face it. Alan Foster says, I think racers are more professional than freestylers. Charles Townsend. Personally, Flatland doesn't does nothing for me, but I love watching guys on the ramps. Neil Woods, another pro racer. It seems like freestylers, freestyle is a lot more laid back than racing. No one is bossing, or, bossing you around. Steve Veltman said, I think freestylers are really innovative as far as figuring out what can be done on a bike. Pretty cool. And again, there's a lot more to be said. I just kind of read a couple of their lines. Don't let don't let go now. Subscribe BMX Plus. BMX Plus did a full ad for their own subscription. That's kind of cool though. You gotta like that. Let's keep on going here. We're almost through the magazine, guys. We better hurry because we're 34 minutes in. Ballistic. That looks like a. That's definitely a mountain bike fork there. That's kind of strange. Ask the BMX experts. Should we read, read one, guys? I don't think so, because I'm getting a little tired. So we'll skip these. Let's go on. What do we got here? <laughs> look at the parting shot. Wow, look at this old Stingray-style bike. I actually remember stuff like this. Team GT won four national titles at the ABA Grand. So what did you do last weekend? <laughs> wow. They were dominating. That is really cool. Let's see. Who, what did they? How did they get four? Kevin Royal was the national number one amateur in 1994. Team GT, ABA, and NBL national number one team. Wow. Gary Ellis was the ABA and NBL 1994 number one ABA pro. Or, I'm sorry, AA pro. Cindy Davis won the national number one girls cruiser. American BMXer named them, gave them the team trophy. Wow. That is amazing. Let's keep going here. Oh, this is pretty cool. Look at these DK bars. These are really cool. They're kind of reminiscent a little bit of the boss bars, except for this piece right here. And then we got American Cycle Press, Poor Boy, Croopy Parts. Wow, these are really cool looking. Man, look at these big ass cages on these pedals. That's just crazy. We got Fat Free Ad with Iron Horse. I think uh, this is where Billy Griggs ended up racing for these guys for a little while. And we did it, guys. We got the Haro ad on the back, but that is a wrap. BMX Plus, March 1995. That was pretty good, guys. I've got a lot of BMX action magazines to go back on. I have stuff that's a little bit more modern. I even have some BMX World magazines, but we're going to all get to it in time. You know, I jumped ahead a little bit today just because I thought this magazine looked interesting. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. I got it. At first it was hard. Nobody believed me. Ever since then, I'm making it clear. This my year. This my year. I hustle in the dark with a bright my head. Get the bright idea.